but like possible stack overflows. Um, this was really interesting. Um, fix a stack overflow vulnerability um, is actually something that was found for image magic. Um, but I think that one here, this security patch here involved removing about like 700 calls to sprintf. Um, and if you import a large S library and you don't know what it's doing in your product, um, it's always a bad thing because it has its own format string mechanism for arbitrary text fields. So if you load a image using graphics magic and the image comment or copyright or author or whatever you want um, was something like this and it got a percent T in there, it will be changed in the image and replaced by the actual file name. And you got everything, you got like color, size and stuff. Well, if you don't read the code you're linking to, you don't know this. And of course, um, no, you cannot easily parse everything correctly. Um, it's actually, graphics magic is actually really bad. So um, it takes about a day to find a arbitrary vulnerability. Um, so you have an integer overflow in a TIFF parser, it allocates zero amount of bytes and you know, copies the image data over it. Um, the, making this slide was really easy. I basically had to replace TIFF with PNG um, because the conditions are not really the same, but like the vulnerability is the same. It's the same thing. Everything is the same. Um, interesting enough is the PNG guys actually try to protect stupid coders from making mistakes um, by putting an arbitrary value, maximum value, for the width and height because the most classical image parsing attack is width and height will be multiplied by each other to figure out how much space you need, how much memory you need. And if that's gonna be over um, four billion, then it overflows and then they allocate as much memory and then write stuff in there. Um, so this is why they limit it arbitrarily. Of course, um, this means you have to read like four more lines of C code where he's multiplying it by 20 and then everything is good again. Yeah, I already mentioned it. There's a Zlib museum um, living in a PNG parser. Um, so we have a known decompression bug in the Zlib version used. Um, so the PNG image data is zip Zlib compressed always by standard. There is no other way to do it. Um, well, that of course means you get a heap overflow when decompressing image data. Um, interestingly enough, while using this huge S library and not caring anything about it and using an old version and all, um, the PNG bugs that became known, um, the lib PNG was obviously handled by another guy because they were patched. So putting this all together, how will an attack look like? Now we have vulnerabilities that execute code on the attachment handling service. Um, of course, the point here is Often you get a question, but how this is in the middle of the network. I don't get a shell back. Well, you don't want a shell back. I don't want a shell. I want the keys. So this is, for those of you who don't know, this is the international SK symbol for an asshole. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so news, there are assholes on the internet. And so one of them actually um, sends a email with a attachment to your arbitrary BlackBerry user account. Now, as soon as the user of the BlackBerry finds the, interest in the attachment name interesting enough to click on it, we've heard that in other scenarios on other platforms before, um, this happens. So, um, you basically execute code in this space. Now, you would never, I mean, if you spend so much time writing an exploit for it, you would never actually try to export a shell through two firewalls. It is possible, but it's like the most unstable thing to do. Um, you basically own this box, and then you use the existing code of the enterprise server to do SQL queries on the server and query, yeah. Well, you do a remote database dump over SMTP, um, because then you use the other provided functions and talk to the connector and, you know, give me the key.
So this is the reason why you have to put this guy, guy in jail. Um, there is no other way to do it. You have to really take it off onto a separate box, which is supported, and then put a firewall in between and make sure this guy doesn't talk to like secret server and you know your mail storage and everything else because this guy here is 100% parsing code which means 100% attack profile. The problem with doing this is that at the same time it will of course need to talk to the Blackberry server. And to do this um, they actually invented a new protocol, never been a smart idea, um, and use unauthenticated XML files over a TCP port to control this. Which means you can, of course, it's unauthenticated, it's XML, we all have text editors in Netcat. Um, so you send queries over, you can query version, statistic, number of processes, but you can also set the processes. Which is really interesting, what happens if you set the processes to, to zero? Due diligence, it turns off all the processes. Um, no attachment conversation. Um, 20,000, I never managed that. If you got a really, really big Windows box with lots of RAM, I would love to see if there is a limit on how much, you know, child processes one can have. So I got it to like um, 7,900 before it died. So here's the final administrative info, and we worked hard to have this here. Um, the JAT issue, as I said, is fixed on the handhelds. The PNG issues are fixed. Actually, the code um, no longer uses graphics magic in this case. Um, Zlib is updated. Um, the TIFF and the SRP issue where we're talking about um, are pending. They're right now, well, yeah, there's not, not so much information on it. Okay, so we have this um, traditional final slide. Um, Special thanks. <laughs> Special thanks to a lot of people. Um, I would like to, like, I would like Ian to wave a hand. Ian is from RIM. He's their security guy. And thanks for being here. Um, yeah. Anything else? Let's get drunk. See you next year.